what it's like to sleep outside. I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to eat out of a dumpster. Having been homeless, I think the one thing I remember most was being invisible. You don't have a name. Nobody wants to look you in the eye. They want to walk by you as quickly as possible. I was arrested in 2006, and my daughter was placed in foster care. And I lived on the river for a couple of years. I met some people from a church called the Bridge Bible Church. These women came alongside me and mentored me. People had hope for me when I didn't have hope for myself. And went into a recovery program, got sober. So I know what it's like to be on the streets, but I also know what it's like to be invested in. I'm a firm believer it's our job to invest in others. Now, I work for Flood Ministries. I'm a housing case manager. Our focus is linking folks that are experiencing homelessness to resources within the community, mental health services, housing, Medi-Cal, food stamps. Our ultimate goal is to get them into housing. We're going to go find Lynn Edlin. I had went yesterday to look for him in the area he generally stays in, and I talked to one of the shop owners that's kind of befriended Lynn, and he said there was a little scuffle out front of some sort that Lynn was no longer staying there. So we are going to go try to find him, just try to figure out where he's going to stay today. And there he is right there. Hey, Lynn. You're still here, yay! <laughs> thank you for not running on. Thank you. I knew Lynn when I was uh, homeless on the streets, and we became friends. He has mental illness, and I believe often self-medicates with some alcohol. OK, so if I can get somebody over here with a truck, can we put some of this stuff in storage? Most of it, back. Then it would be awesome gentlemen, there. just, I want to say, can't seem to catch a break. OK, let me go get my phone and call the office and see if we can't get the truck over here, all right? OK. Over at the other end, right there. So what woke me up was sprinkler, sprinkling. I'm like, oh, OK, so I jumped off and went over there and kind of blocked it while I was doing it. Lift it up and over. You know, I've known him for so many years, and I'm watching him shrink both physically and mentally. And it's, it's breaking my heart. Thank okay. you. I'll find you. Thank you. Built for Zero is a collaborative of communities across the country who've all made a shared commitment to end homelessness. But the benefit of Built for Zero is that all of these communities are doing that together and can learn across the collaborative as some communities are making gains and some are struggling that there's an opportunity for peer sharing across the network. It's very hard to address needs around substance abuse or behavioral health or physical health before you have a place to live. And so the answer is to move people into housing first and then wrap all the services those individuals would need to support them successfully staying housed. In Kern County, it was the first time we'd ever tried housing first. It was the first time we tried an assessment tool and prioritizing people. It was very new and foreign to us, but it worked. And those people remained housed and they remained housed for a very long time. And most of them are still housed today. We have a 97% success rate in that model. The relationships and the partnership on the ground in communities are essential in this process because they are working to develop and implement systems or processes that really work for individuals experiencing homelessness. I feel that the efforts being made in Kern County to end homelessness are phenomenal. Everybody's on board. It's not just like one agency trying, it's all agencies. This is an all hands on deck effort. The Landlord Summit in Bakersfield is important. It really takes the partnership of 
all stakeholders across the community to end homelessness, specifically landlords who have access to units where people can be housed. Housing doesn't magically give you security and stability, right? But we think it's the lever that we can pull to get people there faster than anything else. But the brass tax says, if housing ends homelessness, you own the housing. The ball is in your court to figure out what are the specific actions that you can take to clear the path for people experiencing homelessness. There's some housing on your table that looks like this. If you're a landlord or you know somebody or you, you can connect us with a landlord, put down the information on here. And I want you to take your, your house and I want you to put it over here on the key. Because what are we doing? We're going to put keys in the hands of our clients. So it's up to you now. Thank you. We did the call to action, and it was a terrifying moment. We have no idea if any landlords are going to get up out of their seats. And landlords got up. And there was a line of people holding these little house cutouts in their hands, ready to commit those units to homeless individuals. And it was a very emotional moment. I see a new passion that has ignited in this community. When you participate in these programs, it touches your heart. You get to feel proud as a landlord, like saying, hey, I'm making a change. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being, the, uh, I'm providing to the community and it's helping everybody out and you get to see it and it's just a great experience overall. Ending chronic homelessness in Bakersfield or actually Kern County, which is much larger geography. It's not only a big deal for the people who live in Kern County, but it also acts as a model for what does it take across a large area in California to drive population level reductions. And we're seeing communities everywhere from a community of 500,000 to a community of 4 million being able to do that. I think the first challenge is actually believability, whether people believe it's possible and whether there's will to do it. We've located when a standalone home what have you been cooking since you've been in your new house? Well, mostly I've been cooking eggs and meat. Got your rent paid, got all that good stuff done. Water's in my name and um, PG&E. PG&E's in your name? Yeah, right. I should feel awesome. You should feel amazing. Oh, I do. I feel really, I'm grateful. He's a shark that caught a shark. So I put him up on the wall. What are your hopes and your dreams now that you're in? All I've asked is that I fall in love and that someone fall in love with me one more time. That's a good dream. Yeah. We're hoping that will be his forever home.